Well, hello everyone. My name is Ted Gardner, and uh, um, I'm an interviewer for the Public Library of Cincinnati and Hamilton County. And I'm interviewing Mr. Joe Perry of Hyde Park. And uh, it's uh, 26th of September, 2006. And uh, our cameraman today is Isaac Hartlaub. Uh, Joe, it's an honor to be here with you and to speak with you as a fellow fellow sailor. <laughs> and uh, Cornfield, that is. <laughs> well, you, you were a, sort of a land-based sailor. Definitely. That's yeah. definitely right. Uh, Joe, you were born in 1926, and, uh, uh, you know, when we get to be our age, we're, we're sort of proud of it. Yeah. Here yeah. we are, still we, alive. We you weren't know? doing bad. We're, we're still making it. That's a fact, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, golly. Well, that's great. So you just uh, you just passed your 80th birthday. August. Yeah, how about that. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. That's just wonderful. Well, you know, uh, this wonderful program that the library uh, conducts is, uh, is, is really, really, I think, is being very, very effective. It was begun by the Library of Congress in Washington, oh, okay. of course, you know, okay. and then they involved all the public libraries around the country. And Cincinnati public libraries, I think, uh, the way they're handling it is, is just wonderful. Um, downtown, and I've had experience with the uh, veterans uh, out at the Dell High Library and the Anderson Library and the Cheviot Library and now the Hyde Park yeah. Library and uh, it is wonderful and, and the, you know the interesting thing is to uh, they're turning up people that we've never known about before. Well they're not. Absolutely right and you know you go around you live in the city here for as my wife and I have for 50 years and uh, uh, we think we know a lot of people and every day I meet somebody uh, new and, and uh, very, very interesting and it's just a pleasure to, uh, to be here with you. What, uh, when you. When you saw the light of day, were you born in Cincinnati? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, great. Um, where'd you go to school? Well, Graduated from Roger Baker High School. Okay. Yeah. On the west side there, yeah. Well, it's St. Bernard. St. Bernard, uh -huh. yeah. So, uh, yeah. I was, let's see, I graduated at 17, enlisted at 17, yes. on active duty, 18. Right. So, right. Well, those. Got my feet wet. I should say, well, those were exci <coughs> exciting times. And, uh, uh, you entered the Navy in uh, in '44, right? Is that correct? All right, right. Golly. So you were you had just uh, you just gotten well. You were working up to your 18th birthday. Turned 18. <laughs> right. Um, where did they send you the first from when you first went in? Great Lakes. Great Lakes boot camp. Yeah, yeah. And we were all teenagers. Right. Pretty much away from home for the first time. And I remember uh, they assigned you your bunks. The fellow, my bug man was Bill Peak. And he told me he was from Cincinnati. He graduated from Purcell. But, oh, oh, my God. What a help this is. You know? Well, I should say. Yeah. Yeah. That's tremendously supportive. Yeah. 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 So uh, I guess you went through boot camp one time or another. Well, I did. And I, I grew up in Oregon. And I went to war in Oregon from from college, and uh -huh. uh, and I was sent to San Diego. Okay, to, to yeah, San yeah. Diego, and that was that was quite different because well, I was far from, that was far from home, and right. and uh, I had a lot of strange people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a lot of strange people that I had never uh, really known about, you know, yeah. and it was it was. Uh, it was a very uh, strong learning experience. Mm -hmm. Well, Great Lakes, of course, is a great place right there in Chicago. Yeah, man. Waukegan. Yeah. Of course, you think you did there all the time in a boot camp. No, 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 no. You were, you were really almost incarcerated. In boot camp. <laughs> well, they had a big uh, fence, lights, rings. I said, now don't go near that fence. <laughs> oh, this is not so good, you know. <laughs> and as a 
train that uh, ran right outside. I said, no, you'll never make it to the train. Right. So, <laughs> forget it. <laughs> yeah, almost like a prison camp. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <coughs> so the uh, Navy determined that you uh, you had the attributes of, uh, of um, being able to write and uh, were you a typist? Yeah. Yeah, you've taken typing in high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very important. I did Wouldn't too. Help, yeah. Yeah, that's that's uh, that has has helped me throughout life. But uh, uh, so as 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 a yeoman, uh, what was the, were you assigned right out of boot camp to the CBs? No, I had to go through service school. Right. That's sixteen weeks. Mm -hmm. And then I wound up being assigned to the CBs in Rhode Island. Huh. And. Uh, Pretty nice assignment, you know. <laughs> I should say so. Yeah, so uh, you could uh, go into Boston on weekends, go to New York City once a month, that sort of thing. Nice liberty. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Yeah, uh, it was pretty good. I should say. Well, for those uh, who might be watching this uh, sometime, don't know what CB stands for. That's the initials for Construction Battalion. Yeah, this is our. There's your cap. Yeah, yeah we show that. CB we can see and that very, can very do. easily. Was can saying. do was their slogan and their great, uh, their great fighting phrase. Yeah. And uh, can do meant so much in the CBs because, yeah. of course, uh, uh, not only uh, had, did you have to be a good sailor and, and uh, a good, uh, uh, a good service person like that, but you also uh, had to know something about. Uh, at least get exposed to construction yes, and uh, know the ins and outs of that and keeping records and all that sort of thing. Very important. Part of the job, yeah. yeah. Did you enjoy that work? Yeah, it looks like it wasn't bad. Not bad. Yeah. Uh, I see these guys out in the field and I thought it sure nice better where I was than the way they were. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, uh, tell me about your tell me about your initial training after boots. Well, the uh, yoga school was 16 weeks, and uh, they gave you a, a lot, a lot to cover, touched on it lightly, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And then the idea was that uh, you were going to learn out on the job, learn by doing. Absolutely. So I got up to uh, Rhode Island. Things are going along pretty good. Right. And I came up with something called Jungle Rock. Oh. And it was on my feet, yeah. on my hands, and on my face. Good heavens. They thought, well, this guy isn't going to do us any good down in the, the Pacific. Mm -hmm. They had a draft going up to northern Alaska. And most of these guys were people who had contracted malaria. Right. And they had to get them out of there, so he sent them up to northern Alaska. I sure took care of the malaria. They weren't too happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, that that would be quite a quite a jolt to be yeah. <laughs> transferred from the tropics to the yeah. to the cold country. Yeah. Well, the um, uh, in your work as as a yeoman, and for those who might not be familiar with that term, a yeoman in the navy is uh, uh, a person who's trained in in writing record keeping reporting is a very very important uh, very important task and uh, uh, and a yeoman has to be pretty well educated pretty sharp pretty yeah, person, pretty, I pretty sharp to get in that school yeah i i know all about that i uh, had lots of contact with yeoman uh -huh. over the years and uh, depended on them very heavily and mm -hmm. uh, admired uh, Admire their training. The Navy did a good job of training people like that. Uh huh. I think so. I think so. Did do you think that helped you in the rest of your life? Any? Well, sure, or? sure. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, this is something I had. Sea bag with Navy gear. Yeah. They went in the sea. The well, juggle greens. All right. They were going up to Alaska, so I got two more bags of clothes. Wow. And I had four sea bags. Good. That's a big load. <laughs> I tried to, to go on the troop ship. The guy says, 
what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to front backflips too. He said, you aren't going to do that. <laughs> so I staggered up there. <laughs> right. <laughs> you do it now or you don't get it all done. Well, you're going to go, boy. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, they didn't fool around, particularly if you were deal dealing with a with an old uh, uh, Mustang chief, you know, boy, oh boy, the job done. like a top sergeant in the yeah. army, you you uh, paid attention to them and you did as they said. That's about it. Yeah. But uh, so where did they? Where did you first hit land in Alaska? Well, southern Alaska. I think the town was Whittier, hmm. and uh, got off on a pretty good rain. Right. Came to Ponchos. Oh yeah. And we're out in some fields, the army, and uh, giving us some food, you know, with a cold roast pork sandwich, an orange, and some, a box of animal crackers. <laughs> and I looked at that thing and said, boy, that's a bad, pretty bad. I said, Kroger Baking, Cincinnati, Ohio. Said, Look what you got here from Cincinnati. <laughs> I just as soon forget that. <laughs> yeah, right. That's not necessarily the best, the best thing from home. <laughs> yeah. So then we uh, went up for this trade, for, went up into Fairbanks. I think I ran about 25 miles an hour to this top speed. Oh. And they said, uh, well, you know, it's going to be quite a while for to get there. You right. just, just sat up, that kind of stuff. So uh, we got up into Fairbanks, and then I was as far as you went. And there he had to fly. Mm -hmm. So he uh, flew uh, from Fairbanks into Barrow, uh, C-47. Wow. Uh, I think the uh, Brooks Ranger was 12,000 feet or something like that. They didn't have a ceiling to go through there. So we went, you see a circle. You know, look at that at. Look at that guy. Uh, he knows where he's going. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we got up there. What is a godforsaken oh, tundra? Yeah. Oh my gosh! They landed on a, a steel mat. Yeah. And uh, I said, "No, okay. It's what are we gonna do here? You know, well, we'll find something for you to do." <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, oh my gosh! To be uh, to be transported to uh, a desolate part of the world like that was mm. quite a jolt. Wasn't mm. it? Yeah. So. Um, so there you were at Point Barrow. What in the world? Why? Well, the purpose of the whole thing was to bring in oil. At the time they said we only had like a six month supply. Okay. And so we had to get that oil, uh, get the wells, and work on the planning of the pipeline that was going to go down from Barrow down to the Gulf of Alaska. Uh -huh. and then they're going to Loaded on ships there, and they were taken down to refineries sure. in uh, California. Sure. So, uh, huh. after about a week or so, I was on the garbage crew. So <laughs> 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 it was a pretty lousy assignment. Yeah, <laughs> and then, uh, you know, I'm human. So, uh, <laughs> I was only a seaman first class of striker at that time. Yeah, right. So, right. Uh, you hadn't gotten your, your Chevron yet. No, no. So, uh, <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, I got assigned to the geology department, or whatever, a bunch of geologists mm -hmm. there. And uh, one was, I don't know what his background was, pretty good, with Pluto of Brazil. Mm -hmm. And he sort of knew stuff, we got all fine, you know. And some guy came in from the field, he was pretty ticked off at Brazil. He loaded on, and he says, Oh, there you are, your SLB. He takes a swing at him. Uh -huh. And Brazil, well, he decks him. He said, Get right. that guy out of here. So I said, Well, Brazil is opening in the best way. <laughs> <laughs> so then, uh, oh, boy. So you, uh, you had contact with the petroleum oh, geologists yeah. and engineers. Yeah, well, engineers. he was a geologist, and then the uh, main one I worked for was uh, Lieutenant Commander, oh, yeah. Iran. Uh -huh. And I just heard it in. Uh, so he like had been a chief geologist for something like Standard Oil, California. Right. And he was he knew what was, what was, had to be done that sort of thing. Uh, they were debating where to put the first well. Mm -hmm. So you put it right here. Well, they said that's too big a decision for a lieutenant commander to make. So they had a captain down in Brazil with a naval academy graduate, mm -hmm. and they flew him 
up the barrel. They looked at the thing. He's going to say, "Dove." No. Yeah, put it right there. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> yeah, the old chain of command. That's yeah, about that's it. Right. So one of the assignments I had was every <clears throat> go to the ground, and every five feet or so, they take a mud, they put it in a little bag, they label well, how many feet that was. And this bag, a box would come in there. My job was put it on a stove, dry it out, mm -hmm. and uh, put it under a microscope. I'm supposed to count how many fossils were there. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> it was sort of an interesting thing. Well, yeah, and my golly, what, uh, what an interesting, uh, uh, you know, gathering knowledge and lore, yeah, things yeah. That, uh, which you'd never been exposed before. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And uh, that, that's, uh, um, did you, uh, was your, before you went to the Navy, was your home in uh, St. Bernard? No. Hyde Park, uh, Mount Auburn. Mount Auburn. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, how about a family? Did you have brothers and sisters? Or? Mm -hmm. Five brothers and sisters. Five brothers and sisters. Yeah. Boy, pretty exciting. I was the oldest boy. You were the oldest boy. Yeah. Okay. Well, that certainly, uh, that certainly <laughs> was a help in uh, preparing you for life. Too. Oh, I think so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was an only child. Oh, I, well, yeah. I always wanted brothers and sisters, <laughs> and I missed them terribly. But uh, so I always admired families that had uh, several children. And yeah, uh, what it would be like to have a, a brother and a sister, you know? Yeah. And twin brothers and twin sisters. Twi oh my goodness! Yeah, so uh, uh, the brothers were closer. Mm -hmm. brothers. Mm -hmm. uh, several years difference. But uh, I remember where they were born. And it's, sure. I have never been through that before. They were born at home. Right, <laughs> right. Well, growing up in a family like that, uh, as we've uh, as we've said, uh, was was very uh, very interesting and, and uh, educational right. and, and training right. and all that sort of it thing. It worked. It worked a lot. Yeah. Oh yes, yeah, so I should. Had a say. paper route. Yes. Yep. Got all through high right. school. That sort of thing. You bet. <laughs> Oh yeah, I know what you mean. I did a lot of that same thing myself. Mm -hmm. Well, the uh, uh, the tour. How long were you uh, in Alaska? Well, you only got way up there one winter, one winter. because the uh, climate was so severe. Mm -hmm. It was a strong chance you were going to get tuberculosis. Right. Not only the climate, every Eskimos, everybody up there had tuberculosis. Yeah. They said, all right, you're going to be here one, one year, yeah. and then you go out of here. Right. So that was sort of a, a nice thing to think about. Fortunately, you weren't, you didn't con contract TB uh, or I had a test. Later on, I said, well, you know, you've had the contact. I said, I don't take any more tests. Right. You know, let it go. Good. So here I am. Well, that's that's good. Well, you look great, and you're, you yeah. sound, you certainly look fit. Uh, the, uh, uh, the so the period you were there just uh, September through through the winter. Well, and, no, uh, September was early when spring. I went on uh, active duty. Uh -huh. I got up there. Well, we got up there around May, through June, whatever that sort of thing. I see. And that was when they were having the. Uh, the Midnight Sun. Yeah. That's <laughs> an interesting experience. You can go out there and play softball at midnight sure. if you wanted to. Of course, yeah. in the tundra, you can wear a run right. on that uh, tundra. Spongy. Yeah, that sort of thing. But then uh, when winter came, I don't know, late October, November, the sun went down. Mm -hmm. And it was down for about mm -hmm. two, two months or so, that sort of thing. Darkness all the time. Well, you had the northern lights. Oh yeah. And uh, the the moon, mm -hmm. very brightness, and the uh, snow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it wasn't total darkness, anything like that. But so yeah. And I know when the sun came, uh, cleared the horizon first. Everybody stayed up outside. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh boy, what a treat that was. I'll say. See a sunrise. I should say. That, that, that I think it went down two months later, but. Uh, right. <laughs> well, that's. Uh, gosh, for a guy from, from Cincinnati, that, that must have been a very, very. Um, yeah, you, know, you just saw the Eskimos. Uh, they had their dog sleds. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had a race. Up there, you know, about ten miles of like that, you know. Right. You know, that's so interesting to watch that. Very interesting. And then the uh, Eskimos, they mainly made a living by hunting seal. Mm -hmm. So they, you'd see them, and they'd uh, take their boat, get out on the ice pack, and then they'd go, oh well, wow, come back with some seal. And I know that uh, this one time a whale, they got a whale. And that thing, they got enough to feed everybody. <laughs> I don't know, I don't want to eat me, whale meat, but <laughs> no. it, it did the job. Pretty fishy. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, uh, one time a uh, polar bear came in off of the uh, ocean. He said he came in because he was so hungry. Mm -hmm. And he got to camp, the expo shot him real quick. Mm -hmm. And uh, they said, now there's always a. Uh, Companion, his companion is probably going to be coming in one of these days, one of these times, you know. And so at that time, I was had the assignment of waking up the cooks and so on. And I had to go out. They said, "What? Do, what do I do? Run into a polar bear?" I said, "Well, so they, said, they can outrun you on a level. Yeah. They can, can outrun you going downhill, but you can outrun them going up." I said, "Hell, there isn't a hill with it. There wasn't <laughs> 500 miles in here." <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah. And I went, whoops. You know, <laughs> shoot the next one. Oh, does he have here? <laughs> and I get those cooks out. Oh, so I say. The guy, guys were going to eat. Yeah. yeah. Really, very unhappy who caused that. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Well, that's, that's uh, that, that, so interesting and so <coughs> unusual. Yeah. Um, you know, we think of the, <clears throat> we think of the, <clears throat> Excuse me, the Alaska campaign, mm -hmm. uh, and of course that was that was mainly in the Aleutian Missions. Islands, yeah, yeah. Attu and Kiska and so yeah, forth, yeah. and the Japanese weren't there very long, <laughs> yeah. because I remember in my history mm -hmm. that, uh, uh, although I wasn't up there, but uh, in reading it, that uh, uh, when the Americans uh, stormed ashore on those islands. Uh, the Japs were already gone. Well, know. the first island uh, they hit, they had resistance. Yeah. And they uh, found them. The second island, they had gone. It was enough. They didn't want any more of it. Right. I don't blame them. No. <laughs> I <can> see that. <laughs> pretty, pretty godforsaken country. Uh -huh. yeah. Terrible, terrible. Well, uh, did you experience things like the Willowa and all that yeah. sort of thing? Yeah. Uh, we can. Tell this. people what the Willowa is. Well, <laughs> you know, normally it was 30, 40 degrees. Routine, that's what mm -hmm. But then this uh, will walk came in, and that was, whoa. Never Terrible seen, storm. Never seen it like that before. Right. And uh, he went and said, well, do I want to get over, try to get over the chow hall and eat? Or, well, you make, you know, get out there and hang on the pole, or wow. hang on the pole, that sort of thing. Right. Well, I get there. <laughs> I said, you know, it stays like a damn cold. With the, I said, well, I think it might be about 56 below. I said, oh. <laughs> the Eskimo, everything stopped. You know? Yes. <laughs> they they know. curled up, waited it out. Right, you know? uh, right. Uh, it's hard to keep engines going and things oh, like yeah. that in that yeah, kind yeah, of weather. Just, uh, Petroleum, the oil froze up. Uh, I got kind of stuff. Sure. But, uh, <clears throat> well, that, that's, uh, that, that's very interesting. Did you have any, uh, any other unusual experiences that you recall? Well, I never had the uh, experience, but they uh, had all this heavy equipment, and they had a, they uh, had about a two or three week when, this, when the ocean was all you know open, they had to keep moving up and down the coastline mm -hmm. and dropping stuff. They came in on off of the previous one and got on the shore, mm -hmm. and then after that. It was necessary to try to you know, sled trains. And they put these uh, huts or whatever, shacks, 
where guys would be in there and they would uh, sleep, eat, whatever. And the, uh, the sled train, there was not any <laughs> way of, you know, roads mm -hmm. or anything, how to get right. down there. So they had a tractor pulling and they had a plane flying overhead and they would, you know, steer around here what would be the way you get to get through there. Right. So they got down to uh, Umiak where the well was going to be. Mm -hmm. And I was, they were gone about, well, about a week or two there and back. It wasn't all that uh, distant, but it was rugged. How about drilling? What, uh, well, what was that like? Well, uh, <coughs> I understand they got about, about 1,800 feet. Really? Uh, Peran had convinced them that dynamite could be hauled out. You could put it on a stove and it wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so the only thing is, you don't have the plastic caps. As long right. as you have the plastic caps, you're in business. And, uh, so, so you really had to warm it up to be able yeah. to use it. Right, right. <laughs> 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 Oh, what conditions. Well, My goodness. Yeah. So you actually saw, uh, were there such things as gushers or? Oh, no. Nothing no. like that. <laughs> there was uh, so much oil and fran up there such you can't come on. It's puddles of it right. sitting around there, but I never saw any gusher. No. Uh, <clears throat> he knew his stuff <clears throat> and uh, had some newspaper clippings there. Five years, he took his discharge up in Alaska. He says, you want to stick with it? No, I, I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> you got your points and you were out of there. Well, I, it was so ridiculous. I had no points at all, practically. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, I don't know what you did, but uh, I'm going to be here until now on doomsday. Good heavens. And uh, uh, then we came in, like, like 500 men up there, mm -hmm. peak. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I got the Shuggers, we see the yard or whatever. So the type orders were 495 people, whatever. Wow. And uh, we're down to six. And I got uh, mine before I could go ahead and type up for the last three guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, oh, man. That was a long struggle. Yes, I should say <laughs> so. <laughs> but I had my uh, service broken up when uh, Ferran. He all, he, he all you need to do, he had done, he moved down to Fairbanks. Mm -hmm. And there's a world of difference between Barrow and Fairbanks. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I moved into a uh, Air Force uh, barracks. I'd never seen anything like that before. Right. Uh, you, you only clean linen once a week. <laughs> Whoever had clean linen. <laughs> <laughs> and we had been eating steady diet of uh, potato, dihydrates, potatoes. I built mm -hmm. uh, something else, uh, and uh, so they, uh, they weren't having any of that stuff. They were having a real thing. Real thing. And I uh, said, uh, what do you want for breakfast? Uh, you, what do you mean, what do you want? Well, eggs? You don't see the eggs? Yeah, pancake? That'd be fine, you know. Sure. <laughs> they had it. Uh, <laughs> then a steam heater barracks. Oh, you know, this oh, Air Force. My. What a deal that Luxury. Got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he had a movie theater down there, and oh, soda fountain, yeah. and a chow hall. Everything were there. Sure. Gee. Yeah, well that, that was uh, yeah. that was quite a step up from where you started yeah. out. I remember the, uh, oh, this one October or whatever, mm -hmm. the guy comes on the radio and says, it's turning a little cold out there, you better dress your kids. And, uh, mm -hmm. and that was 40 below that morning. I thought, oh my God. I, I'm not free. I'm not gonna make that. No. <laughs> well, yeah, well, you got used to it, you know. And I got some picture there, uh, uh, buddy of mine, and we were out skiing when it's about 25 or 30 mm -hmm. minutes. It was routine. Mm -hmm. And uh, he looks like uh, he's pretty doggone cold. Well, hey, I got a lot of gear on him. <laughs> yeah, two pairs of socks. Yeah. Uh, and uh, light underwear, long underwear. Right. And a uh, yeah, shirt, uh, and he had these uh, parkas, and he had you know, like Wolverine fur. Mm -hmm. And your, your face was pretty well protected. It was sort of an interesting, your uh, breath would freeze. 
and you have high sickles. <laughs> yeah. Oh my oh, Jesus yeah. sakes. Most of the guys would grow beers. So uh -huh. I couldn't grow a beer. <laughs> <laughs> I just wasn't there. <laughs> well, that, uh, uh, that, that's really something. Well, the Navy, uh, my experience, uh, the Navy really did a pretty good job oh, yeah. in supplying and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you have powdered milk and yeah. powdered eggs I and things it. like that? Yeah, eggs, yeah. Sure. So, yes. yeah. You got used to it. But oh, yeah. Never heard that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I remember yeah. we got up at uh, Barrow. They had one outhouse for 500 guys. Wow. And that was murk, you know. Mm. You'd uh, go in and uh, knock you out. Yep. And they had a uh, but probably stove. So you like to get loose when they pull. And uh, they had an, an officers and a you know, list of men chiefs. Mm -hmm. And a guy come in there for the first time. And he would sit, officer, whatever. Right. And that was the shore of the Arctic Ocean. That wind came in there. Whoa! <laughs> oh. <laughs> so you wanted to see the next time where he's going to sit. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> Anything but a hot seat. <laughs> I know. Uh, well, that's a bath uh, house. You didn't take anybody to bath. You know, something right. I got to have a bath really in the game. No. Uh, that's one the uh, group of correspondents come to. There's one woman, and when she wanted to go, the outhouse was. You had a red flag. She's mm -hmm. sitting there. How old is she gonna be? <laughs> <laughs> and then she wanted to take a. Bad. Oh, well, I hope the uh, water doesn't run out on her. I'll <laughs> say, I'll bet that was a real jolt for a woman. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. That was only a very quick chip in and out. Yeah. Right. Did you have any waves up there? No, uh, no. no, no women no. Maybe at all. No. And uh, you had uh, the unit had a. Did you say just a lieutenant commander or is it? As yeah. a commanding officer? Yeah, officer charge. Two and a half uh, stripes, yeah. Yeah, it was a, That's unusual. It was a rough, officer. rough uh, outfit, you know. I should say On, so. On uh, VJ day, uh, they had a, you know, I wasn't in, I was too young to get on this thing, but uh, they had an enlisted man's party and an officer's party. Mm -hmm. And he made a mistake of going to the enlisted man's party. He had two bodyguards. They still, Threw him in the trash can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I saw him. They say he had a black eye. <laughs> wow. Oh, this boy's play rough. <laughs> yeah, I'll say. Well, then you didn't. Uh, you didn't get down in, into the into the Pacific Ocean area. Oh. Uh, uh, we got to, you know coming up there. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Somewhat. Uh, uh, but that. That was it. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah that, was your, that was your Flew service. Home. Well, I don't envy it at all. I think that was that was a pretty, a pretty tough way to go. And mm -hmm. uh, the um, it was so, of course, so different in the South Pacific. Uh, definitely all tropical and all yeah. and everything. Uh, so you were up there for about uh, uh, about six months. Is that it? Uh, a little better than that. It was, a little uh, better than that. Yeah, the winter was pretty well over. Yeah. Uh, about like March, whatever. So, VJ Day came along. That means yeah. victory in Japan, of right. course. Right, and that's what counted. And, uh, you know, one of our concerns was that we might have to, we might have to go to Japan, you know, and try and and route the Japanese, mm -hmm. defeat them on land in their home. Yeah, no, no, don't worry. And uh, there was so much publicity about VE Day, victory mm -hmm. in Europe. Who cared? <laughs> right, <laughs> the other side of the world, you know. Yeah. But that's you know that got so much publicity. I know, as uh, as you well know, and of course, uh, such events uh, in the European theater as. As, <clears throat> as uh, the landings in Normandy, they mm -hmm. call it D-Day, yeah. and you know, so many people even today 
I think uh, there was the D-Day was the 6th of June 1944, period. Yeah. There were D-Days throughout the war, you know, every time you landed, mm -hmm. whether it was in Alaska, in the Alaska campaign, or whether it was in the Philippines, or in New Guinea, uh, in, in the Pacific, uh, there was a D-Day, and that's what it meant. That, wow. That's what it meant. This is the day that the landing took place, wherever it was. Right. And you know, I don't know if you knew, remember this or not, Joe, but talking about, uh, about the D-Day in Europe, uh, at the Normandy mm. beaches, mm. that was on the 6th of June, that's 1944. And uh, a lot of people don't realize that on the 5th of June, 1944, was the time that we liberated Rome. Oh, how about that? Yeah. And that gets very, very little past other notice. Gets very little notice. You had a uh, cousin who was in the North African campaign. Yeah. And then. He went into the Italian campaign. Oh, and that was terrible. Your, your daughter. He finally oh. uh, got killed up a casino after 84 days of her life. Oh. It was way out, so Sniper got him. Yeah. Where, you know, yeah. So he said, lucky he was got killed in North Africa. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah, those were, that, that was a terrible, terrible mm -hmm. campaign. Yeah. And, you know, being a soldier with your boots on the ground and in the battlefields of yeah. Europe and, oh, and North Africa and everything, and it was yeah. really, really very, very tough. So I, I always felt very lucky. I, um, I survived a number of things, but yeah. uh, uh, I'm just very thankful that I didn't have to fight on land against, See, face cousin, to face against the enemy. I had a cousin in that, uh, right that battle of Bolts. Oh yes. Yeah, he managed a by the time to write me a letter. For God's sakes, join the Air Force, join the Navy. Don't let them, <laughs> don't let them send you over here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man, that's a pretty good advice, came. Well, I should about. say. Uh -huh. Well, now, came August 1945. Right. Uh, were you still in Alaska oh, at that sure, time? Sure. So, when the bombs were dropped on Japan at yeah. Nagasaki and yeah. Hiroshima, you oh. knew about that? Oh, sure. Yeah. That was a great idea. <laughs> great idea. Saved millions of lives. Yeah, yeah. It really did. And you know, the, the apologists for that sort of thing today, usually people who didn't live at the time, yeah. and they're out in the streets protesting on Hiroshima Day and so forth. Well, yeah. What terrible people we were to, to do that. And yet, uh, that shortened the war, yeah. saved millions of lives on both sides. Yeah. If we'd had to gone into Japan, well, into the homeland, uh, it would have been it would have been terrible. Our expectation was we finished up there, we were going to be gone, and we were ready. Okinawa was a really tough dip. That was a terrible campaign. Yeah, well, then we still got to take on Japan yet. Yes, it's taken years. I'm going to do. Oh yes. Uh, yes. Oh, boy. Well, you know, we 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 knew and we learned and. Uh, that the Japanese uh, in the homeland mm. were deeply dug in, oh, yeah. and they still had that philosophy, you know, die for the emperor, yes. and uh, all that sort of thing, and they were prepared to uh, fight to the like death, that, yeah. you know. So, uh, so along came the the time, and you signed, <laughs> you wrote up your own orders. And yeah. What, ha what happened then? Well, I tell you, uh, that. I, uh, worked for a pretty good lieutenant, JG, whatever. He was concerned that I would get down to Fairbanks, that I could go on in Kodiak, and they would knock me off there, keep oh. me in Kodak. Oh boy. So we got this deal, you know, I uh, flew down in the Fairbanks in the, F the Air the Army to fly me down to Anchorage, and from there on into the uh, Home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so a little bit of uh, planning on his part was uh, a big help. Well, I should say yeah. so. So from from uh, did you go into Seattle? Yeah. And then where, what happened there? Well, then you had to come home to Cincinnati. And was that by train? Yeah, it could fly, but I don't know. <laughs> 
thought about that. You no, know. I know it. We just didn't think about it at those times. It was there was some airlines flying when the yeah. train was it. You know? Yeah, right. So I don't know. It was a, quite a drag. No. I don't know. I mean, two, a couple of nights on a train, mm -hmm. going to Chicago, mm -hmm. and in Chicago you came in here down the uh, valley and a river going on in. Came in the Union Terminal. Yeah. Yeah, right. famous Union Terminal. Oh boy. Did you, when you got home, was there any particular celebrate uh, aside from your family yeah. and friends? I mean, was there anything formal in Cincinnati? Were there parades or anything well, like that? I think that had happened. Right around the time of the war it ended. Yeah. And right. so this was several months later. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, uh, I know, so. I never got to march in a, in a victory parade. <laughs> <you know? laughs> well, uh, our marching wasn't all that good anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, the, the Navy was never known for uh, uh, top notch, precise marching. And uh, the CBs were even worse. You know? Oh my gosh. <laughs> and you know what I loved about the CBs, yeah. Joe, was. Uh, uh, the fact that they were, they were really independent well, souls, listen. you know, and and they were, you know, they were construction men, right. builders, and yeah. and and people like that, and they were accustomed to creating things and mm -hmm. doing assignments, yeah. tough assignments, and you know, the heck with other people, the heck with rules and regs and yeah. so forth, you know, and that's what made them so effective, and uh -huh. of course. Um, we down in the South Pacific, a lot we saw a lot of that, of course. Yeah, yeah. But you you talked about the landing strips up at Barrow, putting down the, uh, the steel mats. Yeah. yeah, because uh, the planes would have sunk into the tundra and yeah. And, uh, or I remember when I loaded the ship, the supply ships. There was a lot of stuff there. It's supposed to be going to the officers, and one guy said, "Hey, we gotta have our share of that." And so they stashed it, and then uh, had a chance that they can't got it. We, they opened up the floorboards, so I crossed that, and they buried it under there. Uh -huh. And uh, then they said, there's a hell of a lot of stuff missing around there. <laughs> so they sent the chiefs out to uh, go look for it. And so while they were out, the guys quick got that up and put it on the, the chief's porch. <laughs> oh, brother. Yeah, so they were safe, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so we never had to worry. Yeah. And they got it back and they put it back where it belonged. We didn't worry about what they had. Sure. And we liked it, we didn't like it as well. You know, right. We had did, you have, did you have beer up there? Uh, I wasn't much of a beer drinker. Yeah, but. But they had, a, they thought they had about a year's supply of beer. Uh huh. And I think that lasts about two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I'm sure. And your recreation time up there was, was pretty limited, I'm oh, sure. Oh, yeah. My goodness well, sakes. Yeah, they had ball bats and so we could yeah. do it. Yeah. We had a uh, ping pong table. That's good. And uh, <laughs> you won, you kept on playing. Mm -hmm. And otherwise you're gone. So you right. had to wait your turn to get a crack yeah. at that. And you got pretty good. Right. Well, at uh, yeah. practice. I should say. <clears throat> So after you got back to uh, uh, Cincinnati, uh, had you finished high school by the time? Oh, yeah. yeah. So you had your, your high school diploma, and uh, what, what happened then when you got back home? Well, I had uh, time to go, and I uh, got back up to uh, Chicago, and it looked like I was going to be going out to San Francisco. Right. And I saw somebody with you know, this is so I dumb. He just about to get out here and be coming up for a discharge in a couple of months, so I didn't uh, do that. And so it was pretty nice there mm -hmm. in Chicago. And I eventually, well, this guy is really goofing off pretty good. Right. Then we went to Great Lakes and I had a little uh, time in there. Okay. But I got uh, discharged in July. Okay. And uh, it was, was planned to probably go to school, go to the uh, GI Bill. GI Bill. And I had this uh, time him. to kill, right. so I got a uh, job with the Veterans Administration, get experience, right. and uh, come Happy September, year. hey, I, I might as well just keep on working mm -hmm. and go to evening college. Okay. So, 
Yeah, well, good for a, you. Ten years at evening college. <laughs> oh, <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, you're never going to last. I said, well, I think I will, you know. Oh, sure. you got yeah. the determination. Go, well, I figured. They're going to pay for it? I ought to take advantage of it. That yeah. was one of the greatest things that ever happened. Yeah, you know? I, know. I, I mean, that, 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 college. that Well, that helped, you know, that really helped make the country after the war. Mm -hmm. yeah. fellows and the girls who uh, had the chance to get the GI Bill and uh, get advanced education. Well, at the time, there, the older relatives saying that there's going to be a big, big depression. You ought to get mm -hmm. in there and get some seniority. Absolutely. And, uh, and I had an economics professor in 46 in the, the business cycle. And we're going to be, and then we're going to, boy, uh, that's the thing to do. Absolutely. <laughs> you wanted to be prepared. Yeah, but it was interesting. I was, you know, getting promotions right, right up the line. And uh, I know I got a uh, certificate in personnel. So then I wish I was doing some um, accounting, mm -hmm. college exam, that kind of stuff. So I switched over to the personnel. And uh, eventually I got to move it up the line. I think it was a four, four five, or six, <laughs> and I think a seven. We only threw a six in there. Gee whiz! You know, a seven, and I got nine and eleven and so on. Yeah. So it really opened up, wound up in the uh, labor relations board, uh -huh. and I wound up uh, well, let's say uh, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen. I was a uh, team chief. Mm -hmm. Had a group of attorneys, investigators, and clericals. Uh, it was a pretty tough job. Sorry. <laughs> pretty interesting job. I should say so. Yeah. So you had the experience in the courts, uh, did you? Well, I was uh, civilian life. Uh, I was a hearing officer, and I was you know, uh, had these. It wasn't, wasn't an adversarial proceeding, mm -hmm. just to develop information. Okay. Uh, and I uh, thought guy, you know, he was uh, an attorney, and he wasn't uh, wanting to give me some information. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had our 12 attorney specialists in two days on the record, and he was still sort of some guys on, I'm going to get this thing with this guy. Mm -hmm. So he uh, gets up there and uh, he, he posed the attorneys, he asked him a couple questions and he's not get anywhere. And I said, you know, this, uh, this guy is giving us a run around. Yeah. So I was asking him, I started asking him questions and uh, I said, hey, he's asking, he says, I said, don't answer my questions with questions, answer the questions. Exactly. <laughs> and, uh, uh, so he just wasn't going to do it, and I said, okay, we're off the record. So pretty, uh, now, uh, I'll give you a uh, subpoena, Duke has taken, and they'll bring in all their records, mm -hmm. and then we'll get to the one. you'll have to. Well, then, yeah. and at that point, they said, never mind, we'll, we'll agree. We'll talk about it. To a, yeah, <laughs> well. Sure. <laughs> what a surprise that was. Good for you. Yeah. Well. yeah. Well, you see, there you are with that training and that experience, yeah. you know, and, and yeah. your your knowledge. Uh, that, that's just wonderful. I had wonderful. this one case where they didn't want to uh, tell me <laughs> something that I would, we were entitled to know. And I asked this guy, oh, some questions, and uh, it got to the point where he says, uh, the, I, I, I refused to answer. I said, wait, well, you, know, you, can't, you can't really do that. He said, well, you know, I'm going to do that. And so uh, what they did was they went in the district court and they wanted to know who I talked to, who I learned. Right. Which was, uh, that's, that's what I wanted to know. And so they uh, came back with a court order and the judge answered the questions. Well, and I sort of on a spot there, you know. Sure. And I know our uh, regional director says, uh, none of my men are going to go to jail. Mm -hmm. And what, what should we do? I said, well, uh, point, adjourn, answer adjournment, 
uh, we'll let you uh, call you back. We'll let you know. And I said, and I said that guy, that judge tells me, he answered, I'm going to sing like a bird. I'm not going to pay anybody. So I said, you know, they had a, uh, a FBI agent in Mississippi on civil rights, and they were letting him out. You know, he was going to be in there. So I said, oh, no, I'm never going to do that. So, you know, uh, then uh, we reconvened, and uh, uh, he asked me the questions. There was like six questions. And uh, I answered those. Another question. And I said, I'm refusing to answer. And uh, my, our attorney was says, What he means is he's refusing to answer under Section 43. Point B of the Board's Rules of Election. Said, yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> 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 so I said, All right, no. uh, So they went back in. And the uh, judge, uh, well, he just threw us out of court. <laughs> right. We lost the case. <laughs> So you uh, you settled down in uh, in Cincinnati. Oh yeah. Got married and. Uh, oh yeah. How many children do you have? Seven. Seven children. Yeah yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. What a family. That's yeah. that's. Everybody's true. around. Your first one is in uh, Centerville, Ohio. So. <laughs> oh about. That. Yeah, we got eleven grandchildren, and they're all around a lot. Yeah. Somebody's right. twenty-one, I guess now. Right. Somebody's three. So, got any grand, great grandchildren? No, Not yet. <laughs> I don't think a twenty one's got much idea. No, He's I know. In grad school, that kind of stuff. Right, I'm the same way. I've got grandchildren, but not. Yeah. Well, that. Uh, so since the war, of course, you've had uh, interesting times with yeah. raising a family, yeah. building a home, yeah. and all that sort of thing. And you've seen the uh, great changes here and. In the old Queen City. That's a fact. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even even for me, coming here in '55 uh, from the West Coast, I, uh, you know, being here now for over 50 years, that's uh, we've seen a lot of things. Well, you recall Crosley Field? Oh yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And that's funny you ask me because I had never lived in a major league city. Oh yeah. Okay. And I was so excited, and baseball was my game anyway. Uh -huh. And I was so excited to come to Cincinnati, and and of course, as we all know, and we all love dearly, old Crosley Field. Yeah. Nothing like it. Nothing like Definitely. it. Never, never will be either. Uh, great American so. Ballpark is is great, but ah. nothing like Crosley Field. Uh -huh. And the, the excitement and the the uh, uh, the great home feeling of it. Well, Joe, it's just. It's just been a pleasure to speak with you, and yeah. uh, you have anything else you want to say? Well, I remember that uh, troop ship going up. Oh yeah, in Alaska. Uh, they said always have your life preserver. Absolutely. <laughs> and you would sit on it, uh, <laughs> wear it when you went to. Uh, yeah. uh, well, is it baloney, you know? And uh, <laughs> unbeknownst, they had one of these uh, drills. They were Bang, 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 general quarters. Oh, and yeah. Brothers, and get over up. And I hear the, the deck gun going up and the 20s and 40s going up. Oh, Lord, oh, where is that dead life preserver? All right, Bob. Where is it supposed Lord. to go? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they told me I ought to wear it all times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you mentioned 20s and 40s. Of course, you're talking about 20 millimeter anti aircraft, uh, anti -aircraft yeah. and 40 millimeter. And uh, This was a Liberty ship, and, and we had. That was all part of the drill. Yeah, you had to practice those things. Yeah, don't chase it all. The no. ship, uh, the no. the top no. twenty ten knots, maybe. <laughs> oh boy, top speed. Yeah, yeah well, right. See, it said I saw there were three destroyers. I said, where are those things going? Well, I don't know. It says, well, it's supposed to be a Japanese submarine ran or somewhere. They're out there looking for them. Well, that's baloney. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I spied into that. <laughs> oh, no more than a sub, but must be around here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, it's just, uh, it's a great joy. Uh, uh, you're just one of my new dear friends uh, because of our relationship with World War II. Yeah. And uh, I had a gentleman this morning that uh, had served in the ETO and mm -hmm. had got two Purple Hearts and oh. and uh, he was in a rifle platoon, you know, Bad, yeah. uh, working his way across from uh, France into Germany yeah. and so oh. forth.
but I've, I've, I've also had uh, the great joy of a person like you who had very unusual experience. And uh, now this is recorded and you know our public library here in Cincinnati is doing such a great job. Uh, it really is amazing uh, how well organized they are and it's encouraging and now now you're recorded for for posterity, you see? Yeah. And if anybody ever wants to look at your tape, you know, it can be gotten out of the archive. Yeah, children. <laughs> Absolutely. Very important because, you know, once we're gone, yeah. if we haven't told our story, that's lost history. Well, you know, when our kids were little, you know, decided to settle them down at bedtime. And always, uh, <laughs> they would hear Davy's story. <laughs> oh, sure, absolutely. Thank you, I know my stuff. Oh, yeah. That's a good Daddy, t Daddy, tell us another one. Yeah, story. well, this guy, a yeah. couple of kids were my age, and uh, we <laughs> uh, were always, you know, one went on uh, to Stanford Law School, it was a judge in San Francisco, and that's wow. all right. Uh, he was screwy. <laughs> he went to Dartmouth and he was uh, but uh, I remember uh, we would be out somewhere in uh, Seattle. Uh, we were heading on out. Well, yeah, and uh, uh, I said, uh, I'll say a shrimp cocktail. I, said, I don't drink. <laughs> I didn't really think I'd be kicking it. Right. I was like, oh, it's come on, try one. Oh, food. Yeah, and uh, oh, he uh, that's had that cocktail sauce. Yeah. And I put that on like ketchup. Sure. Man, I'm sweating like a oh, napkin. Hot so, uh, yeah. Oh, what a clown <laughs> he is. <yeah. laughs> but then we'd be walking down the street and they'd, they'd uh, I thought, well, we'll stir up a little excitement and they would have a. They fight and everybody was storming. Oh wait, there's another sure. the old chicken walk away. Putting on the show. And yeah, no, it was what Kitty, he was a pretty good gymnast. Walking down the street and he flip. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> and I know uh, Herbie, I was down in uh, Fairbanks <coughs> and the guys up in Barrel wanted some booze. I said, well, okay, I'll work on that and I got to bottle of booze and put a bag, sea bag of clothes, shipped it up there and said, the, the clothes are coming in. <laughs> <laughs> so he's on the lookout for that thing. <clears throat> and he didn't have any experience with booze. <laughs> and he has to try it himself and he gets stink up. Oh, yeah. And he's walking down the street looking for his bloody old officer to say, hey, put that guy to bed. <laughs> <laughs> And then there goes the booze. And yeah, all the oh, way I should say. But I wound up uh, being the best man at his wedding. Oh, uh, wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any re uh, reunions or anything oh, like yeah. that? Uh, you do. We uh, get together so often, every so often. Mm -hmm. And uh, 50 years uh, yeah. later, we took this trip back up to Alaska. Oh, you did. And this time I had my wife. Harry had his wife, and Herb was uh, yeah, split up. You know, he gets married tonight and says, you're too young. Sure. <laughs> That's what <else>? Right. <laughs> he had a hundred bucks that he says, his, so his aunt says, get him, get him, he's right. So, uh, I'm the most best man, and uh, uh, get in there, uh, a weekend deal, and uh, I'm just, uh, he, uh, he's at this hotel, I was staying in this hotel, and uh, I go to church, and then uh, he said, you know, I better check, make sure Barbara's got a way to get to, with the church. I said, yeah, I guess it better. <laughs> <laughs> said, yeah, I says, uh, my, her uncle's going to take her. <laughs> so we walked uh, to the church, and uh, we're eating ice cream cones and watching the people come in. <laughs> right. And after the... Uh, uh, well, anyway, I got to go back, and so <coughs> all of them, they tell me to take me down to the train station, and I get on the train, and the bridegroom are <laughs> waving me off, waving <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> it's really unusual. <laughs> I should say so. Well, that's one thing, I, one more thing I want to mention, and that is on the, uh, on Veterans Day, the 11th yeah. of November, yeah. 
uh, the main library downtown oh. has that wonderful Veterans Day program. Okay. Have you ever been to that? No, no. Well, put that on your oh, calendar. Yeah. I think uh, the 11th of November this year is a Saturday. Oh, I think it is. Okay. Could be. And they always hold it on Veterans oh, Day. Please. And uh, they always have a nice speaker. They yeah. have a very uh, touching, impress mm. impressive uh, memorial. Yeah service remembrance of uh, the fellows and the girls going uh, past and so yeah. forth. Well, I think you'd enjoy that very much, Saturday, so uh, well, it's, uh, try and remember that. That's how I was killed in Korea. We, oh, really? We talked, trying to talk about it. He was 18. He yeah. Time. Well, I can... Uh, well, uh, okay.